So now we're going to find the collar sleeve from a seated bed position. So uh, especially with the gi, we don't want to be playing off our back with no grips. So we're not going to willingly go to our back in an open guard situation without grips. Um, no gi, there are some circumstances where that's more, that, that that's okay. For example, if you have an opponent that's really engaging and, and you feel comfortable off your back and, and that's fine. But in, in a situation where you have to go get, go after your opponent, okay, your opponent's not engaging, or if there's the gi and your opponent can make such meaningful grips with the entry that we can really get behind, okay, we want to make sure that we don't go to our back if we can help it before we have the grips that we want. Okay, so if my opponent's on his knees, okay, and we're playing in this kind of seated guard position and I decide I want to play a collar sleeve guard, I'm looking for one arm and I'm going to look to get a double grip on this arm. Okay. Uh, many times this is going to be come because my opponent's going to be reaching for me with that arm and I can either intercept or he'll grab, uh, make a grip. Okay. Often with the gi, it's going to be a lapel grip, in which case we put just like our or a seated guard game, we put same side foot on the hip. So avoid being uh, pushed down and smashed here. And now I'll always be able to uh, maintain distance with my opponent. I have the sole of my foot on his hip. Okay, I'm gonna break the grip, advance to a collar grip, and fall to my side, pushing into my, that grip to find my position here. Now, if I land like this, there's gonna be nothing stopping me from shooting the triangle. Many times against a, a savvy opponent, your opponent will be able to sneak that knee up when you land, and then we're gonna to have to go into the, the options to separate his knee and elbow from combat base. Okay. So if our opponent is on their knees, uh, we're gonna, we're looking to get that foot on the hip. If he's standing or has, or he's already in combat base, okay, again, we're looking for to get that two on one and then switch to this uh, collar sleeve. It's difficult just if we're just getting, getting in the habit, we're not make, able to make these groups at the same time. It's difficult to just have this one to one grip because our opponent can rip away or circle out of this. And as we see, my, my grip is relatively undefended here. So we're going to look at some uh, technique later to to protect that sleeve grip a little bit better. But for now, we want to make sure that we keep that uh, arm with us. So we're going to make a two on one. Okay. So I just have uh, two hooking or cat's paw grips here. And there's a tremendous difference between having one hand and two hands uh, on our opponent's sleeve in this situation. If I couldn't find this grip, I can even pull off of just this grip here. I can even pull just off of this grip and then find the opportunity to switch to the, to the collar once I'm on my back. Okay. But what I don't want us doing is to just be pulling guard here with no connection and then thinking we're going to find a collar sleeve. It's very difficult to find if, uh, if we're on the back, if we're on our back, especially with the gi and we have no connection to our opponent. So we're going to, if we were, uh, if any time the connection breaks, we want to try to kick our opponent away, sit up to a seated guard where we can start to chase our opponent and engage on our terms uh, and either get to our opponent's legs and entangle the legs with single leg X or X or K guard or uh, find, uh, find strong grips where we can return to our back and play from.